If you're a YouTube creator, then beware because hackers are targeting and taking over channels like never before and using the channel's live stream feature to scam people out of cryptocurrency. And when they're done, they move on to their next victim and the original creator is left feeling hopeless and struggling to regain access to their channel. Now, this has been a growing issue on YouTube now for a few years, and even members of the scam baiting community have fallen victim to these attacks. So today I'm gonna to share with you some ideas that will help protect your channel and hopefully keep your content and accounts safe. All right, so before we begin, let's discuss an aspect of scams that is often overlooked. We normally focus on the money part, the amount of money that is lost or the amount of money that is saved, but we don't talk about the emotional toll. When you fall victim to a scam, you feel violated and emotionally drained. And the same can be said for those who have been hacked. The struggle to find a solution and the uncertainty of what to do can be overwhelming. All the hard work that has been put into the channel, building a community, can be heartbreaking to see it all be abused, degraded, or erased. Every day on Twitter, I see numerous tweets from people seeking help after their channel has been hacked. The sheer volume of these posts is staggering. And many of these people state that their two-factor authentication failed and the hacker has somehow changed their channel branding, has changed what the channel's about, and has posted a live stream of Tesla of all things, and has also changed the Google account password as well as the recovery phone number. But how are scammers doing this? How are they able to bypass two-factor authentication and passwords and any kind of security that you may have had on your channel? So I'm gonna share with you three tactics that scammers have been using to do this, two of which they've tried with me. The first is pretending to be YouTube or Google itself. The second is pretending to be a sponsor looking to sponsor your videos. And third is stealing your cookies or hijacking your active sessions. Various other YouTubers have made videos about these three methods. And I'm gonna put links to those, all those below because they go into a lot of detail. Like for all you nerds that are out there, they go into a lot of detail and I'm not gonna do that. I'm just gonna show you what they tried with me and hopefully what I show you is enough for you to know what to do in case they try to do it with you. Back in November, I received a couple of emails claiming to be from YouTube support regarding some copyright warnings. And at first, I thought that the email seemed legit just based on what showed in my inbox. But as I looked closer, it became clear that it was from scammers. I remember being away from my computer at the time and receiving this message on my cell phone saying that I had an email from YouTube support. They were actually emailing an email that's not linked to any channel whatsoever. So right away, I knew it was not a real email from YouTube. I could see a preview of what the attachment was and it said it was for a video that's titled, I took over a scammer's account. And so when I looked into the YouTube studio, I didn't see anything there that said I had any kind of copyright issues. So right away, I knew that this was a fraudulent email. The second email I got from them was very similar, claiming that, again, I had another copyright infringement warning. And this is what the message said. Copyright infringement warning. Hello, Deo. Moderation will review these complaints in the near term, and if confirmed, your video will be removed and your channel will get a strike. Upon reaching three strikes, your channel will be blocked without the possibility of appeal. Video title, scammed at the drive through There's the link. Applicant is WMG possible causes. Your video may contain copyrighted content. Copyright holders can block YouTube videos that contain their content. Read the full report in the document at the link below. If you do not read the report in this case, you cannot appeal the moderation decision. If I clicked on this portion here that says open full report, I would then be asked to download something. And then when I download it, they would basically then take over my account, which is obviously not something that I want them to do. The second way that scammers try to hijack your channel is through fake sponsorships. So what they'll do is they'll send you an email claiming to be a company that wants to sponsor your videos. If you agree to be sponsored by these guys, they'll then send you a link to be able to download what is actually some malicious software, but they disguise it as assets for the video or the contract to the whole thing. And once they do that and you click on those things, then they'll have access to your channel. As demonstrated by Mudahar and John Hammond, Downloading these files can lead to some serious, serious, serious consequences. The crazy thing is these emails even try to pass themselves off as companies that have already sponsored my channel. So right away when I got the email from that company, I knew that it was fake. If you know another creator that has worked with that company, 
reach out to them and verify what their experience was like. I, I can't stress enough that it's so important not to download anything from an unknown source until you verify the identity of anyone claiming to be a sponsor before committing to any deal. Ultimately, I think the first two ways I've shown you lead to cookie or session hijacking. Cookies are small text files that store information about your website visits and could be used to identify you. So that way, every time you come back to the site, it recognizes you. Session hijacking refers to the exploitation of a valid computer session. So if a hacker steals your cookies or hijacks your active sessions, they can use this information to gain access to your accounts and steal sensitive information like credit card information, banking information, or in the case of what we're discussing today, your YouTube channel and Google AdSense account. To prevent this, you should regularly clear your cookies and log out of your accounts when you're finished using them. Think of it like when you log into your bank account. When you're done, you log out. Make sure you're logging out to close the sessions so that way you're not giving the scammers the chance to hijack the sessions. Using a secure and encrypted connection when accessing your accounts can help prevent session hijacking. Avoid using unsecured networks. When using public Wi-Fi, be aware that these networks are often unsecured and can be easily intercepted by hackers. So avoid logging into sensitive websites or performing sensitive transactions while connected to an unsecured network. Okay, so what happens if this happens to you and your channel is hijacked and your Gmail account is also compromised? First, let me give you one of the best pieces of advice that I've ever received, and that is that it's important to use separate email addresses for the public. In the About section of your channel, make sure you change the email to a dedicated email that is not linked to either your YouTube or AdSense accounts. This way, if you receive an email claiming to be from YouTube or AdSense, you'll immediately know that it's a scam because it won't be coming from the email address that's actually associated with your channel or AdSense account. That's how I knew right away that the emails I got claiming that I had a copyright infringement warning were scams. Creating separate email addresses for your business is a necessary step in ensuring the security of your channel and AdSense account. From now on, always assume any email to that email claiming to be from AdSense, Google, or YouTube is a scam. To prevent hacking or the possibility of being hacked, it's important to take preventative measures now, even if it may be inconvenient. Trust me, proactively addressing this will save you the stress and emotional turmoil of having your channel or AdSense account compromised in the future. And some of you may remember that I recently asked if you had a Twitter account, and it was for this very reason. And I know some of you may say, no, I don't want a Twitter account, but I promise it's the best way to get help for this issue. This is the quickest and most effective way to get help in recovering your account. Now, when you reach out to Team YouTube, they will ask you to complete a hijack form and provide your channel URL, not the custom one. Also, you may be asked to change your passwords immediately. Now, the process of recovering your accounts may take some time, but it is worth it in the end. And to ensure maximum security, you may also consider using a physical key like a YubiKey. YouTube may have to temporarily terminate your channel, but it's a necessary step in the recovery process. And this is also where a lot of the frustration and helplessness and anxiety, the depression may come in because your channel may be terminated. These are necessary steps in order for you to get your account back. Now, to protect yourself from your channel being hacked or hijacked, there are several steps you could take. In fact, I don't know if any of you knew this, but I'm a b-boy or a breakdancer as it's known in the mainstream. So let me show you with some breakdancing steps, what steps you can take. Step one, verify who is sending the email. Step two, don't download anything without verifying that it's okay. Sometimes something like Windows Defender may not notice that it's a malicious file because scammers will often stuff these files with lots of fluff so that the file size is so big that it may not be picked up by these scans. Step three, log out of everything when you're done. It may be a hassle, but it'll keep you safe. Step four, consider using a physical key like a YubiKey for authentication along with two-factor authentication and recovery phone numbers you may have. These keys are designed to provide an extra layer of security and make it more difficult for scammers to steal your session data. Step five, avoid using unsecured networks. When using public Wi-Fi, be aware that these networks are often unsecured and can be easily intercepted by hackers. So avoid conducting sensitive transactions when you're logged into an unsecured network. And step six, 
Keep software up to date. Keep all your software and devices up to date with the latest security patches and updates. This can help prevent vulnerabilities from being exploited by hackers. When you do this, you'll be dancing online smoothly. I really hope this helps if you're a YouTuber or online content creator. If you found this video helpful, please make sure you give it a like and share it so that you could spread the word and please consider subscribing and buying me a coffee in the link below. Remember, each one, teach one. Thanks so much for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Peace.